reason we need to beat China to the moon, which is a great portion of the thesis of my book, is that if you look at the historical perspective, and, and I actually have an undergrad degree in history, and I, I'm very cognizant that if you don't know where you've been, then you don't know where you're going. Um, if you look at the first space race, when we entered that, the Soviets were clearly ahead. They had launched the first satellite. They had launched the first human being into space. And in fact, our first uh, human launches, the first two were suborbital. Their, their first launch was orbital. Uh, they did the first spacewalk. Uh, they seemed to be just beating us on, on every single point. They put the first woman up and the first uh, multi-person cruise. And, you know, America was falling behind. And did that have a cost? It had a huge cost both domestically, uh, we had a lack of confidence in ourself as a superpower and our technologies, and the world had a lack of confidence in America. Mm. Back in the 1960s, if you were replacing a government, basically, if you were having a, a, a revolution in Vietnam or Cuba or wherever it was, it was going to be a communist revolution because the Soviet Union was viewed as the future. And many people in the world believed that the United States had seen its better days and was going to be eclipsed by this new political and economic model. When we beat them to the moon, when Kennedy wisely laid down that challenge uh, and the Congress stepped up and, and funded it and the American people and industry got behind it and so many of our great uh, aerospace companies that we have today, you know, d descended from companies that were rolled up uh, from companies like Rockwell and North American that uh, put that system together. When we did that, the Soviet Union uh, began its decline from, from that moment in time in the, in the early 1970s. Uh, they stepped back from that. People saw America as the country that could do anything. 